Okay, so you got an interview for that training position. Congratulations. But now what? <laughs> what are they going to ask you in the interview? And more importantly, how are you going to answer their questions in the interview? Don't worry, I've got you covered. Hey, it's Jeff with yourlearningcareer.com. I have been in your shoes. I've been in learning and development for the past 20 plus years, so I have been through a ton of interviews. And not just as the interviewee, but I've also been part of teams that did the interviewing. So I've been on both sides of the interview. And what I'm going to share with you are what I consider the top 10 questions that you will want to be prepared to answer in the interview. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be able to cover every single question that you might hear, but this will be a good foundation for you. If you can answer these 10 questions, you will be in good shape. And by the way, I also have a cheat sheet for you. I'm going to link to it in the description, but I'm going to put all of these questions in the cheat sheet so that you can prepare for your interview. All right, so the first thing you wanna be prepared to answer is the tell us about your experience or walk us through your experience. So this is one that you need to practice. I would, in fact, I would even use a stopwatch and time myself. You wanna make sure you're not too long-winded. You wanna give them just enough to pique their interest so that they'll have more questions and be really interested in you. The other thing I would do when I answer this question is using their job description as a guide. I would pick out one or two things that you notice are highlighted in their job description that you can talk about when you answer this question because you want from the very from the get-go you want to tell them that you are the right person for the job. You have the experience, you have the know-how, you want to definitely get that across. Number two, what is your favorite aspect of training? Now, I know for me early on in my career, I really loved the whole performance part. Like I really liked getting up and uh, being in front of people and getting laughs and all of that. And that's fine. And if that is part of what you love about it, that's okay to talk about. But what I would also make sure I highlighted when I'm talking about this is somehow get across your empathy for the audience or your connection with the audience. There's something that lets the interviewer know that you care about your learners. You care that they're gonna get something meaningful from the training. So you don't wanna just make it about you as the trainer. You wanna get across the fact that you want your training to be impactful to the learner. Number three, how do you handle difficult participants? I can almost guarantee you this will be a question you're asked. When you do training regularly, you are gonna have difficult participants. But what does difficult mean? Well, usually it just means someone who's maybe not paying attention the way you would want them to. So the best way to answer this is, first of all, you definitely wanna have an example. Like, I had a person in my class, I could tell they were having a bad day, and they weren't paying attention. But you want to show that you have empathy for your audience, but then you also do want to demonstrate that you're able to handle it. So you wanna have an example that shows what you did to handle that person in a respectful way. You know, you're not gonna say, well, I yelled at him and told him to get the heck out of my class. That would not be a good way to handle it. Again, you're showing that you know how to handle difficult participants, but also that you understand that these are adults and that you have to respect them and show empathy. Number four, how do you prepare for a training class? This is a really great opportunity for you to demonstrate how you get ready for a training class, how seriously you take it. You know, you don't want to be the trainer that just wings it, that just shows up and starts training. Uh, you want to demonstrate that you are a professional. And I would talk about things like, you know, I get there early. I look at the venue ahead of time. I make sure equipment is working. I make sure that I've practiced 
what I'm going to say, anything that you do to be prepared and give a professional presentation, that's what you want to get across. You want to show that you are a professional. Number five, are you comfortable teaching both in person and online? When we think of training and teaching, we usually think of ourselves in a classroom. And that might be what a lot of your experience is, teaching in a classroom to people in person. More and more though, companies are holding their training online. And so you need to be able to demonstrate that you are comfortable with doing that and that you are familiar and comfortable with web software. You know, things like WebEx, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, there's a whole bunch of them out there. So whatever experience you have, you definitely want to make sure to highlight. So come up with an example where you have taught online, talk about it positively, talk about what was successful about it, and let them know that yes, you can handle both situations. Number six, how do you keep training participants engaged? Corporate training, for the most part, can be really boring. If you've ever been to a training session for a company that you worked for, chances are a lot of times you've been bored out of your skull. So if I'm interviewing you to come in and be a trainer for my company, I want to know that you can hold people's attention and I want to know what you do. So make sure you have some really good examples of how you have kept your class's attention. So it could be storytelling, maybe activities, games, anything that you have done to keep your participants engaged and interested you want to be able to demonstrate and this goes for both in-person classroom training as well as online now online training is even more challenging than in person because you know in person we're, we're together you know it's it's just it's a different dynamic and so online there are different techniques to use for creating that interactivity. If you wanna see some tips on engaging people in the online classroom, be sure to check out this video, which I'll link to here and in the description. Number seven, give an example of a class that didn't go as planned. So this is one where you just, you need to think about an example and how you handled it. Throughout my career, I've had all kinds of different things go wrong. Sometimes it's a participant issue. A lot of times it's technical issues. And in fact, one time I walked into the classroom early in the morning and was getting ready to prepare and I looked up and the whole projector had been ripped out of the ceiling. So that's an example I like to use because that, that shows how I handle stress and how I think on my feet. So that's what you want to come up with. And by the way, if you want to hear the full details of that story, I actually have a video called Terrible Tales from the Training Room. I'll link to it here and in the description, so uh, look at that. But uh, what that question does, it gives you a chance to show how you think on your feet, how you handle adversity. So it's another one of those. Um, so have an example and then talk about you know the lesson you learned and even how it's made you a better trainer. Number eight, what software tools do you use or are you familiar with? Or they might ask about a specific software program. So an example might be PowerPoint. You know, as a trainer, most of the time you're using PowerPoint in some way. And so they might want to know, you know, what's your proficiency with PowerPoint? Are you able to create your own slides? Are you able to edit a slide that you get from someone else? Um, they also might want to know about different online tools that you're familiar with, like can you use WebEx? Can you use Zoom? Now, something to keep in mind, don't get too concerned if there's a specific thing that they use that you don't have experience with. The main thing is to let them know that you are willing to learn it and you're a quick study. Hey, have you used WebEx to present training? Well, I haven't used WebEx, but I, I have used Zoom quite a bit. And I know WebEx has similar features and I feel very comfortable that I could get in and learn WebEx just fine. Number nine, how do you measure the success of your training? Now, as the trainer, you may or may not be directly involved in a lot of the evaluation, but usually 
as, a, as the trainer, you are handing out evaluations at the end of class, or maybe there's a survey. I'd also talk about like a lot of times you'll hear later, like from a manager, anecdotally, you'll hear about, oh, you know, our call center customer service has gone up ever since they took your training, you know, something like that. So any kind of success story that you can relate back to your training, that is good. Number 10, can you show me an example of some training you've done? Or how would you train on X, Y, Z? There are a couple different ways this can go. You know, so sometimes they may just want to see a presentation or maybe they just want to see a facilitator guide of training that you've done. Most of the time though, they're gonna actually want to see you present. Normally, they're either gonna give you a topic or they'll let you pick your topics. But the big thing with this audition is you just, you gotta be prepared. So whatever they give you, just make sure you practice it. I would make sure, you know, if I am gonna, if I'm asked to come back and give a presentation. Another thing is, you know, don't just get up and lecture. You've got to show them, you know, we talked about that question with interactivity. So now you need to demonstrate that. So you should have activity built in and make sure you show that you can not only present, that you're not only a good speaker, but that you can hold people's attention. If you want more information, I'm going to link to an article in the description to help you out with interviewing and job searching in general. So those are my top 10 questions that you want to prepare for for your training interview. Don't forget, I'm also gonna link to a cheat sheet in the description below. I mentioned I'm gonna have articles and other resources linked to in the description. And then I've got some other interview videos. I'll link to those videos here and in the description. So check those out. If you found this helpful, give me a like. Thank you very much. And we will see you next time.